Hi, everyone. This is E. David Crawford, editor in chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. The American Urological Association recently published in the Journal of Urology and online their updated and revised 2021 guidelines on renal mass, localized renal cancer, evaluation, management, and follow up. I'm very happy that joining us today is the chairman of the Guidelines Committee, Dr. Stephen C. Campbell, who is uh, a professor of surgery, vice chair, program director, Department of Urology, Cleveland Clinic. Very concisely, uh, in two installments, Stephen is going to explain these new guidelines and their impact. Interesting highlights around germline mutations and screening first introduced in these guidelines. Also update on radical surgery, adjuvant therapy, uh, and also very importantly, active surveillance. Stephen, thanks for taking your time to do this and sharing this with our audience. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to present this material. I'm gonna review the updated and revised AUA guidelines for renal mass and localized renal cancer. And with this first session, we're going to focus on part one, evaluation and management. Uh, re regarding my activity on the panel and, and this presentation, I have no conflict of interest or disclosures to make. Uh, we really had an outstanding guidelines panel with myself, Rob Uzo, Peter Clark, Sam Chang, Jose Karam, and Leslie Souter. Our main Focus was the clinically localized renal mass, suspicious for cancer in adults, including solid enhancing renal tumors and Bosniak three and four complex cystic masses. And I should mention that the full version of the updated guidelines is available on the internet. And I provide the link right here. Now our methods for this process were standard for the AUA guidelines. This was rigorous evidence-based approach with extensive peer review. We had systematic review and meta-analysis of the literature by AHRQ. Uh, we had face-to-face -face meetings and several conference calls, and we had a strong input from most multiple collabor collaborators from allied disciplines that I've listed here. Uh, what's new or different for 2001? Again, this is an update of the 2017 guidelines that we just updated this year. Well, first the literature is updated uh, so that it would be current through January of 2021. And probably the biggest change is that we've updated the risk-based risk surveillance protocols for patients after intervention. And this was a guidelines that was released in 2013 that's now merged into this document. And uh, this was a separate guidelines until now. But what else is new? Uh, indications for genetic counseling have been expanded. For the first time, the issue of adjuvant therapy has been addressed in our guidelines. Regarding imaging, MRI with contrast can now be used even in patients with severe CKD or end-stage renal disease. So this is a real game changer for us on a, a daily basis in the clinical world. Uh, the issue of deciding about radical versus partial this is now more clearly stated uh, in the guidelines to make the rec recommendations more granular and more useful. Indications and rationale for active surveillance are now also more granular and follow up after active surveillance is now more clearly defined. And indications for renal mass biopsy are also more clearly defined. And this is uh, based on a utility-based approach. Here's the guideline that we're gonna focus on in this short presentation. This, this will focus on the evaluation and counseling and then intervention with partial radical or thermal ablation. In the second part two session, which will be a separate recording, we'll focus on active surveillance and also follow up after intervention. Now let's, so again, with this session, we're gonna focus mostly on evaluation and management. So just some fundamentals first that we should obtain high quality, multi-phase cross-sectional 
abdominal imaging. Uh, we should obtain routine labs that are listed here and a chest X-ray, and we as should assign CKD stage. What's new is that MRI with contrast can now be obtained even in patients with severe CKD or end-stage renal disease. It's been shown that the risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis with second generation gadolinium agents is extremely low. And again, I think this is gonna be a real game changer to allow us to provide real high quality imaging for all of our patients. Uh, regarding renal mass biopsy here, the, it's mostly the same, but the language has been changed to emphasize that a utility-based approach should be used. We should do renal mass biopsy whenever it might influence management. Young, healthy patients who are unwilling to accept the uncertainties associated with renal mass biopsy do not need a renal mass biopsy. And old and frail patients who will be managed conservatively, regardless of RMB results, obviously do not need a renal mass biopsy. Uh, moving on to counseling, uh, not much, too much new here, just some fundamental things that First, a urologist should lead the counseling process. Counseling should include current perspective about tumor biology and particularly for small renal masses. We should discuss that, that most of them have a low oncologic risk. Counseling should review the most common and serious urologic and non-urologic morbidities. We should review the importance of renal functional recovery after renal mass management. And we should consider referral to nephrology in certain cohorts of patients, which are listed in statement five here. What's really new is for counseling regarding genetic counseling. I'm not gonna read it all here, but just note that it's been expanded considerably. And the reason why is because we're learning that a higher percentage now thought to be four to 6%, it's probably even higher, of cases of renal cell are now thought to be familial and uh, no doubt this is going to evolve further in the coming years. Now, uh, oh, we've talked about the interface between evaluation and renal mass biopsy and counseling, and now we'll move on to intervention with partial or radical nephrectomy or thermal ablation. So partial nephrectomy, there's not too much new here compared to 2017, and that is that partial nephrectomy should be prioritized for small renal mass, should be prioritized for imperative indications like a solitary kidney, bilateral tumors, that sort of thing. And it should really be strongly considered for relative in indications such as comorbid comorbidities that can really affect renal function in the years to come. Some principles related to partial nephrectomy, first that we should prioritize renal function by optimizing nephron mass preservation and avoiding prolonged warm ischemia. And that negative surgical margin should always be a, the high priority. Uh, and tumor nucleation can be supported uh, with a good surgeon uh, judgment. Uh, this can be considered, but again, negative margins is really the priority. So not too much new here. For radical nephrectomy, the AUA guidelines are the only one that provides a granular description of criteria for radical nephrectomy. This has been revised to make it slightly more clear. Uh, I won't read it uh, today, but it, it is maybe one of the most important statements in these guidelines. And really the goal is that radical nephrectomy would be utilized for patients who really need it, but while at the same time avoiding uh, overutilization of of radical nephrectomy. Uh, other considerations, uh, the, the, the other major change is for the first time we have a statement about adjuvant treatment. We should consider referral to medical oncology whenever there is concern for clinical metastases or possible residual disease. And also patients with high risk or locally advanced but fully resected renal cancer should be counseled about adjuvant approaches and encouraged to participate in, in adjuvant trials. And uh, uh, this is sort of timely because this is now a hot topic in the field. There's now data 
showing a, a real potential benefit for immune checkpoint inhibitors in the adjuvant setting. And again, this, this will likely evolve further in the coming years. And finally, thermal ablation. Uh, uh, most of this is not new, but one thing that we did change is we're coming out more strongly in favor of renal mass biopsy as a separate procedure performed prior to thermal ablation rather than renal mass biopsy at the time of thermal ablation, as this will really facilitate more rational management. Well, I think uh, I'll wrap it up there. And then with this intervention, we then move on to, in the part two recording uh, presentation, we'll talk about active surveillance and follow-up after intervention. Thank you very much.